so I'm finally going to do a video on this, and this is a generic but quite good Chinese hand crank generator. So you might ask, what's the point in this? Well, the point in this is literally so you can charge up electronics um, if you have no external power source. Well, you obviously need your muscle energy to use it, but when I say no external power source, I literally mean, you know, you don't need any other sort of thing other than this particular device here and you cranking it. So it's quite simple how it works. I'm not going to go into all the electronics. You'd want an electronics channel for that, how it works internally. But looking in, I can see a capacitor inside there and sort of the big sort of motor type thing. So how it works for the consumer sort of point of view is you have some outputs on the back. You have two lots of a positive and negative wire output and two lot of USB outputs. Now for most people the USBs are going to be much more handy because most things charge via USB now thankfully. But what I am going to do is just to prove one of the features on this works as intended, I am going to show you what happens when you actually put a, um, what's the word for it, um, a multimeter into the back and then what I'll show you is hopefully if I can get it all on frame that the multimeter is actually going to you know show something and I've just found something quite annoying the little thing that holds this on as you turn it has fallen off so although I'll be able to do it properly in the video um, that's annoyingly been lost so I'll need to find a little um, sort of what do you call it like a little nut to put on there to um, at some point to um, fix that so obviously the one that comes with it isn't very good but what you've got on here, the only control is a voltage output. So you can do 3, 5, 6, 9, 12 and 15. So basically how that works is, say you set it to 3, it doesn't really exceed 3 volts no matter how hard you wind it. It's not exactly 3 volts as I'll show you with the multimeter, I think it's normally about 3.3 .3 and 5 might be sort of 5.3. But the point is, if I can get this all wired up, so what I'm just going to do, it doesn't quite fit perfectly, but I'm just going to put the multimeter into the output here. That's one in. Now let's do the next one. Right, there we go. That's damaged the springs in there, but that's fine. I only really use the USBs on this. So right, if we go to voltmeter mode on there, and there's this. And then let's set it first to the free volt mode. So what I'm just going to do now is aim the camera down so you can hopefully see the screen there. So as you can see at the moment it says zero. So let me start turning this. And what you should be able to see is it says something like what, 3.34? Okay, there we go. So now let's put this onto the five volt setting. And as you can see, it's now on about 5.3 volts, which is good. 5 volt is probably what you're going to use to charge most things via USB, because USBs are typically 5 volt. Now, just to show you something interesting, if I go all the way to now 12 volt, what you'll notice is I have to turn it quite fast to get to 12 volt. There we go. That's how fast you have to turn it to 12 volt. you notice if I slow down, the voltage drops off. So this is just the cap on the voltage. It doesn't consistently output that if you're not turning it fast enough. Okay, and just to show you the most extreme example, when you're set to 15 volts, you have to be going fairly quickly to actually get 15 volts. And I don't know if I meet... Oh, and look, I've managed to pull the thing off because um, that wasn't very good. Like I said, the nut has come off which holds the um, spinning thing on. Uh, so I do really need to find another actual nut for this better than the crap one they included in the thing. Other than that, it's pretty good, but as said... Um, you know, you are at the mercy of the system there. But as said, you're not going to really want to use this for doing anything up to 15 volts. So how can you practically use this then, you might be wondering? Uh, charging power banks. That's what you're going to be using it for. Anything that has an internal battery. So let's zoom out a bit and I'll show you what I mean. So the mistake a lot of people find with these sort of things is they don't understand that these are designed for mostly charging anything with a battery in it. Ideally you use something like this where you can output more energy than the thing needs to charge if that makes sense. So you have a device that doesn't consume much electricity attached to it and then you can do that, you can charge the battery up so basically one minute of winding might give you five or ten minutes use out of the battery. So again it's not economical compared to plugging something into an out power socket but the idea is you can use this literally anywhere because you don't need to run off a battery. So to give you an idea, here's a um, power bank 
Now I'm pretty sure that I can charge this um, via in out. Oh, I need to actually get a. Is this the right USB I've got here? Ah, good, it is. Right, there we go. So here we go. So this is plugged in. Now I think this has lights that comes up on top of it. So if I turn it this way, hopefully you'll be able to see them there. Yeah, there you go. See, as you can see, this is charging that. But however, I don't want to have it on this particular setting because this is going to be a five volt um, input. So I'll probably put on six volts. That way, um, that's not really going to be over volt at doing this. But there you go. As you can see, I'm charging that up. As you can see, the lights flashing to indicate the charge using this. And then you can obviously use that power bank afterwards to, um, you know, charge your phone from it or whatever use it as an actual sort of application. You can charge your phones directly on here, that works absolutely fine as well. So thank you to Tactical Pirate for telling me about this, because um, this is actually genuinely a good thing. Like I said, the only shoddy construction thing on it really is how that attaches there, it just didn't include a very good nut, but you could obviously put a much better nut than they include on there. I'll see if I can find the one that came with it after the video, it might have just fallen off in one of the rooms in the house I've used this, then I might put a bit of glue on it when I reattach it, then I won't have to worry. But essentially all this is, is, you know, a crank handle attached to a, um, that. Now it's quite hard to turn by hand, you do really actually need the, um, sort of crank on it to get more leverage. You could possibly as well, if you had something in your house that's constantly spinning, it might be possible to rig one of these up to it to actually get a bit of a surplus electricity back. So I'm trying to think of a good example, um, and off the top of my head I can't, but I'm sure there's a lot of things that people might have laying about where, you know, there's something that has re rather repetitive motion, so with enough effort you could actually attach something like this to it, so the movement is at least feeding something that charges a battery. So, for storage and transport, obviously you're designed to take this off, but again, you'd want a better nut on it. And then, what you'd obviously do is get this, put that on the actual crank handle, line up the crank handle with that, put the screw through, and then you've got your actual crank system. So, as I said, it works fairly well. So, it uses the same logic as hand crank radios, because that's literally all it's doing. But I've seen people that have said don't understand how these things are meant to work because they say, oh, this is stupid because, you know, I'd need to constantly be cranking it to use something. The idea is that you use it on something that, you know, charges up a battery. So, as said, you know, for what it is, it's all right. Just don't rely on the, the screw and sort of thing that came with it. There's other models of these that might be better. What I'm also going to get at some point to do a video on that people were talking about in a stream the other day was a system like this. But what it does is it uses, it's one of those hand crank radios, so it's a hand crank radio which has an internal sort of rechargeable battery, and it acts as sort of a torch and one of those sort of crankable radios, but the interesting thing is it also lets you charge other devices via it. So basically, if you're not using it as a radio, you could plug something into it via USB and it actually has an output charger. So it's basically a power bank with its own, so imagine a power bank like this, but with a radio function on it and a little hand crank built in, which is probably quite useful. Because the thing is with these hand crank things, they are fine as long as you're using them on something that doesn't really use much power. Because in that sense, you can have the radio going while you're cranking it, and you're also charging the battery while you're listening to the radio cranking it. Then after a load of, you know, like a minute or two of turning, you might have 10 minutes worth of battery. So the idea is that these are good for use in an emergency. So if you, for example, I don't have my phone on me now, it's in the other room, but you can just, I've tried it, you can plug your mobile phone into it and you know every couple of minutes of turning it is going to give you another percent on your mobile phone's battery. On an old dumb phone it's probably a lot faster than that at charging it because they don't drain the battery very fast. But the point is, you know, in an emergency situation you can get a bit of charge into your mobile phone to make an emergency call with one of these if the battery is completely dead on your phone. Um, but, you know, as I said, the main reason you'd want one of these is charging power banks if you've got no actual electricity to do it. It's, like I said, human power of cranking is not a very efficient way of charging stuff, but for very low voltage stuff it does work. Because, again, like I said, most people who see these don't seem to understand the concept that they are for where you have no other form of electricity whatsoever. You know, they, they are not for conventional household use. You would not want to be constantly cranking your mobile phone to keep it charged. 
but as said, they are actually good if you've got no other, um, you know, system where you are, or maybe you're out camping or something, and you just want one of these in your sort of kit bag to actually charge up your mobile phone while you're out camping, you know, you could do a lot worse. Um, but, you know, it's the same sort of logic to, you know, the old shake torches or the old, you know, wind-up radios or wind-up torches, the idea that those are the sort of things that don't require much sort of amps and volts so you can do it with your hand quite easily but there you go i thought it's a cool little thing it's worth having but as i said i need to really get a better system on it for uh, keeping the crank handle on because the screw they included with a little washer or nut didn't really cut it at all so um i'm going to sort that out now and as i said it would also be interesting if i could figure out a way of attaching this to something else like maybe i've got a desk fan there and i bet you there would be a way of to putting it on a desk fan. Now I know obviously at some point if the thing isn't doing its job anymore, so if you attach it to a desk fan and then the desk fan you know no longer turned, it's pointless because you're then just using mains electricity to um, charge up whatever you're doing through this which is pointless. But obviously if there was some sort of fan where it was still blowing the air but you could also you know keep this going um, you know then that would be quite a good system. So you know it is what it is as I said, it's for a very specific thing, but I quite like, you know, things like this that let you generate electricity without any sort of external power source other than you as a person. Because obviously, there might be a situation where you'll, you find you have a complete power cut, you know, you don't have any charged up batteries and you might need to make a phone call. And for that, something like this is perfect because you do it yourself. You don't need an external, you know, power supply connected to anything to do it.